72. Welcome. Welcome. We're on. We're, We're on. And we've got a uh, we've got another guest. We're back to back guesting. Yeah. Um, which is good. We haven't had we, we didn't have guests for probably what eight or nine weeks, ten weeks, and then we had the unfortunate Suns boys on last week, um, which is just rookie and one person who's important because <laughs> it's not rookie. Um, <laughs> and now we got our boy Clay on. I'm, I'm here to make your day. Fucking Clay oh. here. Wow, that's already uh, you may know him as Claytronic. You may know him as the host of Welcome to the Potty Podcast. You may know him as the clumsy jeweler because he's always dropping gems. Or you may know him as the name that I just made up tonight, the Leaning Tower of Steezer. Please give it up for our boy, Clay McMath. Welcome. Welcome to Wormholes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Leaning Tower of Steezer. I like that. Yeah, do you like yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> Leaning Tower of Steezer. I just uh, thought of that today. And it was funny because like, um, and we might as well fucking start here because we were just talking about, you know, people talking about being tall. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. And I was like, but that's a good one. If someone came up to you and was like, hey, you're like the fucking leaning tower of Steezer. You're going to be like- i drop him. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's that real. It's that real, baby. No, uh, at least it's clever. As I said, you haven't yeah. heard that before. No, I haven't heard that one before. I'll tell you, if, I, if someone comes up with something new, I'll, I'll let that in. Yeah. But when someone's coming up with the same fucking how's the weather up there or as you talked about, do you get fucking nosebleeds from that attitude? Any of that shit, yeah. fuck off. Yeah, Heard put them down. Times. And I got the double bros. My name is Justin. So I get the fucking, oh, Justin. Oh, I get all oh, of that and shit. And you're a ginger. Bro, I even. Yeah, it's just nonstop, bro. Some girl I went to school with. You're right? actually a minority. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? I think I get to claim that. Because yeah. ginger as well. Um, some girl in school, like I always get the Justin and fucking Justin time, all of that. But some girl- uh, in school, shout out to fucking Haley, who's never going to be listening. Um, Justin saw a piece of cake and ate it. That's what she came up That's with. That's brutal. And so, but then- That's got some sting to um, it. No, it wasn't her that she came up with it. She could have got cancelled for that. She, she could have got cancelled. Yeah. Sorry, it wasn't her. The reason I thought of her actually is her name, I shouldn't drop her last name, but her uh, last name- Rhymes worked with. into nah, <laughs> worked into that she made the cake and that I saw the cake and ate it. Actually, it wasn't. I know her. her. Came up with it. I know her. <laughs> Is she? She's hot. Is she hot? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I know her. <laughs> she, he knows her. Like any chick that's hot ever, I fucking know her. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I actually knew a girl named Haley. I dated her and her cousin at the same time. So think about that. Playing. Wow, yeah, I was killing and that's everyone's intro to you, which is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. right? Just like fucking... when I was, I think I was like eleven or twelve at the time. So, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't, oh. even, I didn't probably really even. And, know like, and they I didn't doing. know that they didn't know me. Um, I just <laughs> saw them somewhere, <laughs> yeah. and fucking, I was dating both of them. Yeah, um, mm. yeah. Well, look, uh, uh, it's good to have you on. Uh, obviously, we uh, jumped on. Welcome to the potty uh, last year, and just threw conspiracies at you for a good mm, fucking hour, fucking which was so. I'm gonna try and steer clear of um, of Bush and his involvement with nine. 11 um, tonight. Yeah. Well, um, I actually, because of that episode, had the same guy hit you up, actually, David Weiss, I think his name yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, and I ended up having him on maybe a week or two after I yeah, had you guys on. Yeah, I actually on. saw that, eh? Yeah. yeah. It was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't have enough, like, I believe in the round world, right? Yeah, but I don't yeah, yeah. know anything about it. So I had nothing to debunk what he's throwing at me. Yeah. So yeah. I just gave him a platform for an hour to just throw out his fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, but the thing is, all of the trajectory of the thing and you're like, round. <laughs> you, just <keep> saying, <laughs> you just keep saying circular, yeah. spherical. Yeah. Um, yeah, we still haven't him. got back to him. No. That's what it means. We haven't had guests for so long. Yeah, so, yeah, we just haven't. We haven't. Um, so it, it's super good to be back on the train, man, honestly. Yeah, I know. I, it's, well, yeah, because I love just us two talking shit, but it's great to fucking bounce things off. Mm. That's all. Look, man, I don't envy you. I, I do for your talent in doing it on your own, but I listen to you do it on your own, and I can talk shit pretty well, but you fucking – you nail doing it a solo show, man. Yeah, I, I think like there's, something, there's something to be said about that. Uh, in terms of mental health, I think, I think yeah, there's yeah. definitely <laughs> something wrong with me, but that's that's all right. But you just go hard in the paint, bro, and that's what I like. I that I don't know. Yeah, it's it's definitely something to uh, to behold, man. It's it's enjoyable to listen to, um, and I think you know you've got to have a fair bit of zero fucks given attitude because if you're trying to do a solo show and be constantly worried about the toes you're stepping on, mm. uh, it's oh yeah, it's not Fucking if hell. you're spending the whole like solo episode just being like, oh, and I just didn't mean anything like you're fu- – yeah. That's yeah, not fun. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, one's yeah. In, no one's listening yeah. to that. I right? mean, I get complaints, but who gives a fuck? That's yeah, – yeah. If you want to spend thing. your time, you know, writing to me, well, 
I'm fucking killing it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's one thing that I'm still just holding out for, bro. Like we still haven't been abused. I and I'm I just can't fucking wait. disappointed. I like, know. And I feel like we've had a, a fair few controversial fucking discussions yeah. on here. I feel like we've and obviously, you know, the, like normally, this is the thing. Conspiracies are becoming mainstream enough now because when I first started posting shit on Facebook, like probably five or six years ago, mm-hmm. I was just getting fucking hate poured down my throat, bro. Like everyone was just calling me a fucking lunatic. But like with the things like the Epstein things and that, where like pe- enough people were like, all right, that's kind of fucking fishy. Yeah. Now everyone's kind of like, they're a little bit apprehensive to just jump down my throat because there's a lot of more people that are kind of leaning into some of this stuff these days, even if it ends up all being bullshit, that they're afraid of looking like the idiots. Yep. Whereas like they were the majority before of everyone being like, you're a fucking lunatic. So now I don't get as much and I'm, I kind of miss it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, I enjoy that, that, that yeah, tussle. Because, because it makes you know your shit. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it makes you know and, your facts. And because- I always love when someone would come at me and, and you know, I would try and argue as reasonably as possible and then it would descend into chaos and they'd start getting personal and whatever. Oh, and that's just that's I just internet that comments uh, in general. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It, starts off, it starts off as a bit of a dialogue and then just turns into, fuck you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, stupid yeah, yeah. fat ginger <laughs> you dog. You don't know <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, internet's a fucking great place. Yeah, to, yeah, it's positive. Yeah, it's got, it's got it's got kosher vibes. It's yeah, fucking, yeah, it's good. If you do have mental health problems, spend as much time on the internet as yeah, possible. Yeah, that's it. That's It'll it. It'll help you. Yeah. Now, It'll nurture you and grow you. Yeah. Right? yeah. For about the third or fourth time on the podcast, right now, everyone's going to finally be aware we have plugged the shit out of the fucking coffee that I'm drinking. In yeah, this. yeah, it's that bung bung bean. Tell us, uh, tell us a bit about it. We've bung, all bung, we've bung, ever bean. done is go. This cunt's got this fucking killer coffee. It's yeah, the best yeah, I've ever yeah, tasted. Yeah, yeah. Get around it. Tell us a little bit more about the the whole process of where it's gotten to, where it started from and, and where it's at Yeah, now, where man. are we at with the bung? It yeah. started from me on my podcast always drinking coffee and yeah. saying, oh, that's a good coffee. Like I'm not going to say who, like what brand it is because I really should have a coffee sponsor. Yeah. yeah. And I said that for about a year. No one reached out and then I reached out to every coffee brand you can think of plus more. One got back to me and said that they didn't want to do a partnership and I was like, I cannot believe how much time I spent sending emails. I could have started my own coffee brand. Yeah. And then I started my own coffee brand. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. That's the definition of getting shit done. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. yeah. So it's it's a blend from from four countries, four of the the best coffee countries in the world. Bit of Ethiopian Um, in there? Ethiopian's not in there. Not we got in Kenya, there. Kenyan yeah. from Africa. We got Kenya, Colombia, Honduras, and um, Brazil. Nice. I'm a big fan of things that come out of Colombia, so that's, that <laughs> makes sense why I really yeah. enjoy that coffee. Dude, I've been trying to tell people like <laughs> it's not normal coffee, man. Yeah, like, people <laughs> people are worried about this vaccine. We don't know what's in it. I'm like, what if it came in a powder? Would you take it then? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, if look, if I if they showed me footage of them making it in a toilet, <laughs> I'm on board, dude. Don't worry. Let me put that yeah. fucking on the back of the toilet in a fucking northern suburbs pub. I'm never getting Rona, yeah. dude. I'm Locked never in. getting Rona. Yeah. So when it comes to coffee taste, personally for you, what are you, dark roast? I'm medium? dark roast and yeah. the, the bean. I've only got the the blend at the moment. I haven't gone out to like a single origin or like medium light roast. So I've just got the one blend yep. at the moment. Well, um, when it's that fucking good, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm dark like, roast yeah it's the way I like it. Um, you know, I did a lot of tasting and stuff uh, to get here and, yeah, love it, you know. So Fuck yeah, dude, that's what you want, man. Yeah, might get to a point where I do like a decaf and um, when you want to expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah but at this at this stage, like I'm not in any venues or anything at the moment. Just direct direct consumer, bungbungcoffee.com. Yep. Bung so um, yeah, so at this stage, just just keeping it the way it is. Uh, Very but nice. you've been working hard. I heard you've been hustling, trying to get someone to just pick up and, and yeah, yeah, giving it. out a lot of free coffee. Yeah, um, and it's just hard. Lots of. Uh, I'd say 99.9% of venues, um, they're contracted to a bean and through that contract they get their machine for free oh, and they get free okay. services and whatever. And so if they terminate that contract, they lose a the machine. So then I would 
if I were to go in there, I would have to provide a machine as well. Yeah. Yeah. So See, that's it's, where it's the extra expense gear. comes in. You just want to be like, all right, I've got XXX flavors mm-hmm. and it's going to be this and we'll give you X amount for this price. That's what really what you want to do. You want to yeah. just be able to distribute. You don't want to have to be fucking around with yeah, machines, like, machines and, and having and a fucking, fucking service yeah, technician. Like, I'd, I'd be happy to do that if it got bigger, but at this point it's just like, Beyond my means. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Fuck yeah, dude. That's yeah. it. So, are you are you doing that full time or? Are you nah, doing- nah. Um, I work I work part time, and then um, the rest of my time I spend on the coffee, the potty, yeah. comedy. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. dude. That's fuck killer. yeah, man. I yeah. can't wait till I'm not working full time because oh, it's right. just happen. Yeah, it's just popping. It's just popping. Oh, uh, I'll talk to you about this quickly because um, we talked about this on the podcast recently, and I want to get your feedback on it. What we want to start eventually right is uh we've got a name for it already it's called parts and pieces proprietary limited right yeah yeah um, are you a mutual community yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, parts and, and yeah pa- yeah that's right so that's what and the thing is that for me goes back many years to me talking about when i'd go into town and get fucked up and i was like bro i was in absolute parts and pieces last yeah. night so that has been <laughs> in my vocab for a long time because of that yeah. Yeah. the original um, still came from the crocodile kid of course yeah, 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 that's yeah, where it, but that's yeah. it it'd be like i'm in fucking parts and pieces <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 head went that way fucking legs went <laughs> legs that way bro. Yeah. but what we want to do right is uh is obviously parts and pieces proprietary limited would be a place that could be a hosting platform and things like that for podcasts yep um but we also want to create like a uh like a company or a a community that is all about helping people find ways towards a creative outlet whatever Mm. the fuck that is like a like an agency yeah so but more so focused on the the how do we nurture the talent there as well Mm -hmm. right so uh my boy here is massive into music and been making music for a long time the man who's got the studio at the front of this house is a works at the uh, festival center has been doing musical production for a long time I got comedians fucking coming out the ass. We got people that can play lots of various instruments. We've got people who are artists and chefs and things like that. So if something we I'd love to create like a hub where like the idea is you come to us and we help you find whatever the fuck it is that you want to do. Because I mm. find that there is such a benefit in having a creative outlet, whatever the fuck that is, right? Um, so for me and you and, uh, you know, music for him, comedy and podcasting, comedy and podcasting, like something where you're getting to fucking, you know, uh, nurture that creativity is such a stress reliever, such a good outlet, all of those kinds of things. So we want to create something that is basically there so that you can come to us and whether you want to learn an instrument, put your fucking raps down on a track and have someone show you how to do it, learn how to make your own music, learn how to write comedy. Mm get yourself some gigs, create your social media and just anything that's about that manifestation of that. Um, that's the that's the end goal. That's what I want to be doing full time one yeah. day in my fucking life. So, I like that. I like yeah. that goal. Yeah, I just think um, there's not enough of that. Like, you know, there's not enough. There's a few people that are doing like a comedy course or that are doing a music course, but I would like a, a one-stop shop where you could do whatever the fuck you want, try your hand at it and go, yeah, that's not for me. Yeah. And then have a go at fucking learning an instrument or doing something else. Mm. But you've got that one place to go to where you can fucking explore shit. Like and- a wider network, you mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 Cause there's a little, there's a lot of individual stuff, but A, it's hard to find. You know, like I know of the couple of comedy courses in, in, in Adelaide that run, but you you know, Don't get me been, started. They're the, uh, they're, you know, they're, they've been, it's the same thing <laughs> being, <laughs> being done and, and you know, I, I'd like to, to shake that up and be able to, because that's the thing, like, you know, a lot of people want to co- create content, right? So want to create content or got ideas how to create content but have no idea how to edit it or make it look reasonable or get it into people's faces like any of those kinds of things so you know people have like a a, a tunnel vision towards one thing or they'd like to learn how to play an instrument and also make music but they don't even know where the fuck to start but they'd love to do it so um yeah that's that's the uh that's the goal in the future for me man so we'll uh we'll get you on board as uh as a fucking content creating (laughs) expert uh once it comes to fruition in in 10 to 15 years time yeah all right Um, i'm in there Awesome. Um, now, what was the I other? I better qu- be fucking doing. I better be <laughs> somewhat doing something by then. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll but see. that's the thing. You'll have you'll have many things. And you, well, look, we'll have your coffee. Will be in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get, get a coffee machine in there. Maybe I'll provide it by then. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, and um, yeah, we'll see. See what we can do. But look, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to to go back to the beginning, of the clay story, because uh, mm. I've never really got a chance to uh, to to get to know. 
the ins and outs of the man that we see before us today, the the coffee extraordinaire, the podcast, the godfather, the podfather as he yeah. calls Podfather. Himself. Yeah. Um, the, the clumsy jeweler. Fuck, man, the that's so good. The clumsy jeweler. The milkman because yes. he always delivers. Um, now, you used to live in America? Yep. I went to college in America. So yep. um, I lived there for five years of my life. Wow. Yeah. Now, was that a scholarship or something like that? Yep. Basketball? Yep. Yeah, fuck yeah. I've done my research, man. I've done Shit. my fucking research. Right. Um, Good old Ricky. Now, uh, <laughs> American college, is it anything like what yes. we hear? Wow. Is it really? Yeah. And that's I, went what, to a small, so- I went to a small private university. So it, where I went wasn't even like on the same level as some schools over there. Yeah. So yeah, okay. My school had about 4,000 people. Uh State schools like Arizona State University or other schools similar can have like 30,000 or 40,000 people. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, where they live in apartment build, like the students live in apartment buildings in the town. They call them college towns. Yeah, wow. Yeah, whereas like I was just at a university in a town. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like my school was like 90%. Um, I don't even remember what you call it anymore. Like you live on campus. And like 10% commuters. Yeah, right. Okay. So like it was still boarding. really cool. You're, boarding? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yep. So it was still like you're always around all of your peers and all of that, which was cool. There's mm-hmm. always like parties every night. Um, but like the fraternity culture is more uh, down south. Yeah. And okay. I was up in the northeast. So yep. we had fraternities, but, it, but that just was actually the- more of like a – like if you're struggling socially, you join a fraternity. Yeah, oh, really? Right. Okay. Yeah. Then you've yeah, got wow. your brothers and all of that. And yeah. It's like a network further from university. So, you know, you know, yeah. you get you get advantages in job interviews if if the boss is from the same fraternity as you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, there's, cool. there, like that's not something that I was ever interested in, but there's definitely like pros to it. Cool. So you went over there to play basketball essentially. Yep. And then you went there for the whole four, was it four years or five years? Uh, it was supposed to be four years and I got injured in my second second year. Yeah, I think Far it was my out. second year. So you get four years of eligibility for your scholarship. Right. So I was injured my second year. I played the maximum amount of games that I could that year and maintain that year of eligibility. So I played 10 games and then cut it and just worked on my rehab and all of that. Uh, so I ended up. Um, double majoring because I had the extra year. And, um, yeah, so I was there five years. The fifth year I was pretty much like – I was old, like I was twenty, turning 24 that year. Yeah. And you've got 18 and 19-year-olds coming in. So it's like there's a fair age gap at that point and I was, yeah, yeah. like I was staying in a bit more. I was ready to come home. Yeah, yeah. fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. And uh, <clears throat> now I heard you talk about on the potty recently that you were obviously, you know, you're not sm- you're not playing basketball and shit heaps heaps anymore. Is that because of injuries or? Yeah, yeah, my knees are fucked. I got yep. uh, like stage three arthritis in both my knees. Oh, fuck so hell, fuck. My um, my surgeon uh, when he saw the scan said if I didn't know who you were, I would have thought that I'm looking at like a 65 year old man's knees. Shit, unbelievable. Yeah. And is that from years of playing, or is that congenital, or how does it work? Um, yeah, just just pounding the legs and um. And just oh. dating two women at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> Make you <laughs> weaker than yeah, knees. It's a, it's a heavy load. Yeah. Um, no, nah, but I, I tore my meniscus in both my knees, which is like the, the pad of cartilage in between the bones. Yeah, okay. Um, I did that the first time when I was like, like 14 or 15 and they just sewed it back together. Um, then my first game back, I re-tore it. I went to get surgery again. And I was but- like, just fucking take it out. I don't want it. Yeah. So I took it out. So then I'm bone on bone since I'm 15 years old right. in one knee. Then I went to college and I did the other one and I knew the feeling as soon as it happened. And so when I went to see the surgeon, I was like, I've torn my meniscus. We don't need to do scans. Just do the keyhole surgery and just fucking take it out so I can get back on the court. So then I was like 19 then. So in my left leg, I've been bone on bone since I was – 15 and my right leg I've been bone on bone since I was 19 so yeah true yeah so so that whole that whole saga with your knees at such a young age as well yeah and then I'm playing full time from 19 to 20 um seven or something right yeah yeah Yeah. and uh and it's like what 
in in when you're playing in college, it's not just one game a week, really, is it? You you do play multiple, or yeah, you can play like up to three, like when you're really in the swing of the season. But it's you, yeah, between one and three a week, which just, is insane, depending on the schedule. Yeah, it's 30, 30 games in the regular season. Yeah, um, and then then there's like tournaments at the end of the year, depending on your placing and all of that. Yeah. yeah. So so how did that make you feel? I guess when you reached the the fifth year of college. And you knew that, all right, all right, now I can't do this anymore. This is it. I wasn't at that point yet. Oh, so okay. I, I was like looking for an agent at that point because I wanted to play pro. I got stitched up by my – well, I didn't quite get stitched up, but I recognised this agent was trying to stitch me up. <clears throat> so I had to fire him like weeks in. Fuck. Um, and then I got my other agent who I'm still very friendly with now um, who – who got me all of my my pro gigs. So the first agent was like, yeah, I need to fly out and I need to meet your coach. We need to sit down and have a meeting and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. And he's like, all right, so um, once you've booked my flights, like let me know. I was like, hold on. I'm jobless in college, no income. You want me to book your fucking flight? I was like, you're fucking fired. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, My dad met this other agent in Adelaide um, because he was still back, he was still living in Adelaide with my two younger brothers who were playing basketball at the time. Um, and he met this other agent, put me into contact with him, and he, yeah, he sorted me out with my first, um, my first pro gig. Yeah, true pro gig. Tell us about it. What did you do? Um, Townsville Crocs. So I came back here and I was playing for Woodville. Yep. Um, I, I grew up playing for Sturt, and um, I just a bit of a misunderstanding when I came home. I wanted to play for them and that they said that there wasn't really a spot for me on the team because I didn't do the preseason. Okay. And, like, I wasn't, you know, I, it sounds cocky, but, like, I just, like, come out of playing college and I was, like, just going to be playing leading into, like, the start of my professional career. And I was, like, does it really fucking matter that I didn't do preseason? Yeah, exactly yeah. right. The quality you would have been playing at would have been so yeah. much above fucking Woodville, bro. Yeah, like, and they yeah they were like, oh, well, maybe we can have you, but you won't be starting. And I, I was like, like this is ridiculous. Yeah. So I went to Woodville. I don't need to take that many backward steps. Like I'm coming back yeah. and trying to keep the the ball running at some point in time. Yeah. And again, there would have been some sort of clock in the back of your mind about like. Or even maybe not necessarily clock, but also like the worry about if I do to another major injury or do something, you know, mm. all of these things mean that time is not something that I have yeah. to be going back to fucking bench warming for a season yeah. before I do your next preseason and you decide I'm now fucking worth your time. Yeah. And I, I did come, I came back home in the middle of the season as well. So like they were, you know, anyway, I went and played for Woodville. One guy, um, who I'm very, you know, who was very selfless, sort of removed himself from the team to let me step in like halfway through the season, which was uh, something, you know, something that I would probably never do for anybody. So yeah. um, that was that was great of him. What did he just go like, dude, you're a fucking gun and I'm a dud or what, was there any reason? No, he was good. He was going, he was getting ready to go to college. He, right, you know, he already okay. had a scholarship okay. sorted. So like the season didn't mean too much for him. I needed it for fitness to go to the next level. Yeah. I, my next gig wasn't confirmed yet. I had like an idea of where I was going. Um, and yeah, so he sort of, yeah, let me step into the team and um, we, I got offered a gig in Townsville. Well, I don't know, I'm just trying to think whether I should tell. I was supposed to play for Adelaide, which like I would have loved yeah. and shit went sideways while I was in my car driving to sign my contract. Really? Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I won't, I won't go into the details of that, but that yeah. that really pissed me off. I didn't have anywhere to go. And um, we played the semi-final for Woodville. Maybe I, maybe I didn't even play it. I remember. It was around semi-final time uh, and the coach from Townsville calls me and he's like, I want you up here. Um, I was like, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, tomorrow. Fuck. So I packed my bags and um, booked a flight and went to Townsville um, the next day. And he he got like a sponsor 
of the team to open up his house to me. No shit. So I was living with a sponsor for a few weeks before I found my own place and, um, yeah, I was up there. So that was and the – and Sorry, man. What was it, the N, what was the NBL? NBL, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah NBL. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so getting paid like a, a pretty decent – not decent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But like, living off of what you want to do for a living, which yeah. is which yeah. is the ultimate goal, really. You're like, like I was on that meager rang, fucking. Yeah. Shit, but I was still yeah. getting paid. I was, to- I was talking to my friends about this um, around Christmas time, because uh, I'd never like really gone into detail about it before. I guess like because I was busy up there. I wasn't like calling my friends every day or anything. Like, yeah. But um, I was sleeping for so I was up there for six months, nine months. I was sleeping on a foam mattress on the floor, no like um, bed frame or anything, um, and I like I couldn't really afford food, so Fuck. so I was like I'd buy like those big sacks of rice that you see at the bottom yeah. shelf. I'd buy yeah. that, and I'd buy like twenty four packs of sausages. And, that's- <laughs> and you were playing pro basketball, yeah. <laughs> eating rice off the bottom shelf and sausages with 24 packs. Yeah, fucking yeah. Fucking hell, So, man. yeah, that's all. I was pretty much eating that and, um, like, wheat bix for breakfast and then, like, lunch and dinner, like, sausages and rice um, for, for right. nine months. What and year this- is this? Uh, this is 20... Uh, end of 2014 into 2015. Wow, that's not that long ago. No. Nah. No shit. Yeah. And is that still, like... It, it, it- it's a diet that I'm considering at the moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> is that still, I mean, you may not even know, but is that still like what it would be like for, you know, a player playing? The position that, that I was in is like more of a hometown position. So like if I was doing it in Adelaide, I would have been living with my parents. Or okay. Right. But I wanted to invest in myself. I put all my chips into the table. And so I, you know, I had to pay rent and I had to pay phone bill and electricity in Townsville. So, I, you know, I've got an air conditioning going 24-7. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you know, petrol. I had, a, I had a part-time job behind a bar as well. True. So I'm working, I'm working at a bar till, you know, one in the morning. Then I've got weights at seven in the morning. And then after weights, I've got practice. And then after practice, I've got shooting. And after shooting, I've got film. And after film, I've got work. So what's film? Oh, you just watch. You're watch watching tapes. yourself, oh, or you're okay. watching yeah. your um, whoever you're playing that week. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So wow. it was. Yeah. Um, That's insane. So what? 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 What's the? Um, what's the end of that story? Like, where, at what? What point? Because I mean, that, by the sounds of that, you said about 27. So you you've play, how long have you played? Yeah, up oh, there at for? that time, I would have been. I would have been 24. Yeah. Yeah, probably 24 for the whole time. I probably didn't turn 25 till I came back from there. Okay. Oh, so it was only about a year. That one, you were on. one season. Yeah. I was one up. season. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then what'd you do? So you've got to about two years left of you playing full time. Yeah. That, so I, after that, I had the I could I had the choice to either have the off season and just train in the off season, or play in an off season league. And because I didn't play a lot in Townsville, I wanted to, I just wanted to play. Yeah. yeah, yeah so I went and played off season in Albury. Yeah. Aubrey with Donga. Yeah, yeah. And um, little, right little on the spot, border man. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There. And we, they'd been bad for a number of years and we just like turn it around. Fuck yeah, that dude. Year. That would have been the sickest feeling. Yeah. Like going there and you, you know that you're going to a team that's been struggling for so long and then you've rolled up with there with a, with a fresh team and, yeah. you know, you've, you've, you've dragged it up. Did you win the premiership? That we won our year? conference final. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's two conferences, I, I, like North and South or East and West or something like that. Yeah. Uh, we won our conference and then we went to the grand final and uh, just collapsed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Real. That's still a pretty crazy achievement. Though, yeah. 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 So came from yeah. And I went back and played a, a second season there because um, – the guy that I started the podcast with was in my team and um, we became really close and sort of talked in the off season. I was, I was like, I'll go back if you go back. And he was like, I'll go back if you go back. And I was like, you go back first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, I'm not going back to you. <laughs> Prove to me you're you send me a, back. You sent me a photo of you at the, at the court <laughs> and I'll fucking I'll book my flights, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. so um, we, yeah, we both went back and then that season – 
Uh, we were nowhere near as good as we were the first season. Yeah, okay. And somehow, we, yeah, we still made finals, but we didn't, yeah, didn't quite get as far as we did the, the first season. But that was my last time out of um, Adelaide. I came home. By this stage, I've been away from Adelaide for 10 years. Uh, so I came home and I wanted to finish my career at Sturt and um, had a big blow up with the coach in the preseason. Yeah, okay. Um, and just quit. I just stopped, stopped see, that's, showing up. See, that's such a soul-crushing way to finish a career, man. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't have to come home yet. Like, my knees weren't completely fucked. Uh, I definitely had one, maybe two seasons. If I stayed fit, I don't know how many seasons I would have had left. Maybe two, yeah. maybe yeah. three. Yeah. Um, but at the end of that preseason, like, I was in a fair bit of pain. Um, and the coach fucked me and I... Yeah, I just stopped showing up and that was the end. Yeah. Oh, like like yeah, back sucks, home, I was back home. I was playing with guys that I played with when I was 16. It would have been a good way to go out. but Yeah. 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 But like not going, not doing that work, would have worked out for the better because I would have just been so mad for six months. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, right. and, there, yeah. and how many more bitter memories might have they ended up with at the end yeah. of it rather yeah. than just that one like shitty yeah. fuck yeah. this and then And they fucking failed that season. So yeah. um, I'm pretty yeah. happy about that. Did so, you yeah. did you like go to whoever their like rival is, like not to play for them, but just like sit in the crowd with some of their fucking merch? No, 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 no. <laughs> but like because I was friends with everyone, like they would always be like, dude, like this fucking season's fucked, man. And like, I went to a Bucks show where there was a couple of members of the – like the – board of the club. Yeah, wow. And they like they were like apologizing to me and shit. And I was like, Dude, let's just like we're a Bucks joke. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's yeah, get yeah, fucked yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you're missing Claytronic, but uh <laughs> yeah. let's get fucked up. Yeah. So, so, crazy, so, so it was after that insane. that you started your podcast or during that you started I started it the se- my second year in Albury. So I'd never listened to podcasts. Like I didn't even really know what they were. And um, my nana passed away, so I missed like one or two games to go over to New Zealand for the funeral and stuff. And um, for that whole trip, I was just listening to podcasts. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, me and Dante are a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know every fucking dipshit thinks that there's, you know, every, <laughs> yeah, look uh, at us, bro. Yeah. <laughs> every fucking dude and his asshole's got a podcast, but like, um. Yeah, so I came back and I was like, Dante, we're starting a podcast. Yeah. And um, I just bought a little USB mic. No, we first started just talking into the computer. Oh, really? First, so you can hear like the first episode. If you go back to that, you'll hear just like, <laughs> but like yeah. that's how we started. Then we bought like one bullshit USB mic that we shared that we're both yeah. like hovering over and like it just eventually turned into like, well, yeah, I, we both left. Albury after that season. So we did a couple episodes over Skype and then um, it just turned into just me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he just lost passion for it or? just It just all became too hard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Fair so enough. Where's he? does he not live? He's not from Adelaide. He's not Australian. So he was in England. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, wow. Where's he from, sorry? He's from DC. Okay, true, yeah. true. Um, have you had him on in the last little while, like on a? I haven't had him on. Show? Nah, probably not for a couple of years. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. There you go. I've just penciled one in your. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I want to hear this shit now. Yeah, man. I yeah. want to hear this. Um, that's cool, man. It's cool that you've. Um, I mean, that's a crazy fucking story when you think about how how much shit. Now, before you went to college, always from Adelaide. You born, born in Adelaide. Born in Adelaide. Adelaide. Hospital, nineteen ninety. There you go. Yeah, classic. Oh, so you're already thirty. Yeah, I'm turning 30 in two weeks, my man. So I'm oh, right up there. Right I'm, up I'm there. turning 31 in three weeks. Fuck yeah. Wait, so you're May as well? Yeah. Crow supporter, May, tall yep. as fuck, comedian. Yeah. When are we getting married? Yeah, yeah man. When are we fucking getting married? I'll <laughs> take, this, Winston take this yeah. shit. I'll take this shit off right now. Um, yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Now, you, you mentioned that you have, um, or I heard on the potty that you've obviously been, been fucking th- shooting some hoops again mm. recently. Um, is that just something now where you have to like have a fucking a quick shot and then not do it again for fucking ages because you'll literally just not be able to walk or yeah, like I was probably I did it last Sunday, like the Sunday before Anzac Day, and I was probably I was feeling it until probably Thursday. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, but like wow. I'm in I'm in constant pain, like twenty four seven. Yeah, well, wow. but like my surgeon, yeah, he said like I'm ready for like a bilateral knee replacement, but. I'm 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fuck he's like, know. if you can put up with the pain, you need to until you like literally cannot go on. 
So yeah. have so have you tried CBD oil before? Um, not, not a lot. Like I, I had like a little, like as big as like a eye dropper. Yep, yep. So yep. I had that. Um, it didn't. I didn't really notice a difference. I know, like when I when I like when I smoke and like get high, I definitely feel better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I sleep. I sleep. I like my sleep is so fucked. Yeah. So, so your knees are even hurting when you're laying down. More probably more so. Fuck. Yeah. Because like I, I, I put a pillow in between my legs, but if I don't have a pillow there, it's just like you can just feel the pressure yeah. of them against each other. That's insane, dude. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. And just like it, it, I think that, you know, the the part that's most heartbreaking about that is that, you know, something that obviously you had such a passion for, talent for, and that now it's something that you don't get to indulge in, you know, anywhere near as much as what you'd probably like. Yeah. Or being able to play like, you know, into your – Get out there and play thirty-five plus basketball. Like you know, I got I know my uncle. I filled in for a few times for him, and he was playing well into his. You know, I think he was 47, 48 before he hung up the boots. And, yeah, um, or and ones, whatever you fucking call them. <laughs> um, <laughs> hung, up uh, the hang up the and ones. Um, and you know, I'm sure that's something that you would love to be able to do if you could just to know that you'd be able to get out there and play a fucking social game down at fucking Mars or whatever. You know, um, and that. Even just going out on a Sunday and just fucking dunking a few is 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 taking it out of you, bro. That must yeah. be fucking shit. Yeah, but I mean, I've I've had a passion for comedy since I was probably ten years old. Yeah, and I never would have ever had the time to do it if I kept playing. Yeah. So like True. now, like led you down a different path. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not doing it for a hobby. I want to be a comedian. Yeah. Like, so I'm not, you know, I'm not going out. On a Tuesday night to socialize, I'm going out to get better, and I want to. I, I want to be able to be a comedian. So like, yeah. I'm you know probably not in the right city for it, but I'm you know I'm willing to go on the road and you know pay the money to get seen elsewhere. But that's the thing with the internet these days, man. Is like you could literally just get cameras like these and go up on stage one night and film it and just get some good audio. Mm. And if you could market it right, yeah. it doesn't matter where you're from. Yeah. You yeah. can make it happen. With, with some, yeah, and like we live in the I've, got, I've got the means to do that, um, but I'm also only two years in. I don't want to I don't want to put myself out there too early yeah. when I'm like still green. You want to do like a special like, like, like. Who the fuck's this guy? Yeah. Like, he's, yeah. he's got this high quality shit out there, but he sucks. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'm willing to put the time in. I don't want to rush it and put it out there too early. I don't, well, the reason to travel is because you can rack up so much more fucking stage time stage in time, other states. There's contacts. Just, yeah, yeah, that's it, the network yeah. as well, yeah. Um, yeah, because, I love networking. I fucking love people so much. Yeah, yeah you were just talking <laughs> about on the latest episode and uh, um, the the funny thing um, that you were talking about as well, it's, and it's so fucking true, is that, you know, the – the the false niceties that you have to fucking give to people just because a you don't want other people who you see this is the thing you talked about this but one thing that you didn't mention is that you have to be nice to people who don't deserve you being nice because the person who you want to fucking help you out might hear you being a cunt to that person who fucking deserves it <laughs> so then you have to be nice to fucking everyone oh, yeah. Yeah. and like and that's the thing. Ninety percent of people don't fucking deserve. Yeah. Everything has politics. Basketball would have the same politics. Oh, dude, bro. dude, like when I when I because I played soccer for like fifteen plus years, man, you, it it was woeful, bro. It's, it's yeah. from a young age, woeful. you know. Yeah. Because who's coaching young kids? Parents. Yeah. Yeah. So what? They're fucking bullshit kids. Not gonna get court time. Of course he is. Yeah. 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 You know, like it's it starts from a young age, so you you get used to it, um, and then. I noticed it when I came home from college. Even though, like, college, I didn't have the time of my life over there. I had to, I had my own problems with the coach and stuff. You yeah. know, maybe the, the theme is probably me, but... Yeah, I was going to say, um, <laughs> you've you had a problem with every yeah. coach. No, but this, uh, yeah, so I when I started getting paid and it became a business, I definitely, I definitely realised a shift in, like, the, I don't know, what I was playing for and yeah, yeah, like change your perspective. Yeah, on, bad games hurt more because you you're playing for another There's contract. Fo- financial implications. Yeah, you're and, pa- yeah. you're playing for your bonus at the end of the season and yeah, yeah, it it all it, it got a bit yuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, that's such is life. 
Well, that's the one thing and why I – and I, I fucking talk about this every week, but why I love podcasting so much because the, the elements of control – uh, within us. Like the only way that we can have politics if me and you create it. Yeah. Which again, we're just too fucking stupid. Um, so there's no there's no outside influences. There's no one telling us or, you know, everyone has the ability to fucking put it on a platform or whatever. You're not hoping that YouTube picks it up. You're not hoping that, you know, because it, it's so easily available to you. So there's so much less of that shit because again, you know, in this, for me, in my time in my life, having a family and I still work full time, I don't have fucking time. I was saying to you last night, um, you know, for me to finish work at five o'clock, sit in the city for three hours mm. to get up and do unpaid five minutes is fun. And, and, and yet last night went really well and I got off stage and I felt killer, but that, that, that goes down pretty quickly. Mm. And then all of a sudden I'm on an hour and a half, substitute bus ride home because the trains are closed to Gawler at the moment Yeah, to get home at fucking 11.30 to wake up and go to work again the next day. And My it's bus like, takes an hour and a half. Yeah, dude, about that. It's a thick yeah. bus. Uh, because it's got it's a, a like bus. they stop running expresses and so it's like a stop oh. all stations and it's just hard, man. Yeah. So, so okay. you know, compared to like this where I drive 15 minutes to my mate's house, me and him get to fucking talk shit before we start. Yeah. We get to, I, I pack up when I'm done. I drive home. It's a, it's an easy transaction. Um, and that's the thing, like, you know, it's been good for me because I, I've kind of shifted my focus after coming into last fringe. I was really starting to be like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to go hard on this comedy thing. Whereas now starting the podcast for me, I'm like fucking hobby zone now. Like, yeah. you know, so, um, but I've been doing it for, Nine years. Yeah. You know, I started in 2012. So I'm in a completely different fucking space than what you're in at the moment. Mm. But I think for you, you know, you've already done so much. I've never lived anywhere else. I've never done any of that shit. So for you that's got such a background in and experience, you could easily fucking go and set up shop, take all your fucking podcast shit with you. So you're podcasting wherever the fuck you are. Yeah. And be smashing every open mic and start networking in a place like Melbourne or, or Sydney where it's a lot easier. Yeah. Um, and fucking Bob's your uncle, dude. It sounds like uh, the way to go. Yeah. And it just depends on whether you want to up and leave here at the end of the day, doesn't it? Like, well, I just think like, like you said before with the internet, there's so much opportunity to like, I don't feel like you need to do that anymore. Not at I all, just, bro. I had a friend and I, I won't mention his name because um, I don't want to, you know, it's his business, but he, he went to London to do music um, and um, he's, he's on a plane right now on his way back. Yeah. And he's gone for maybe two years and I was talking to him a little while ago and I was like, what, what was the experience like? Did you get what you wanted from going over there? And he's like, I don't regret it at all. Like the, the life experience was fantastic but – I didn't get what I wanted out of music yeah. coming here. Yeah. And I, was, and I had Ian Edwards on my podcast who's an um, American comedian. Um, a couple Huge weeks get, ago. by the way. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah I massive. Enjoyed that one. And he, we talked about it as well and he was like he lived in Long Island and moved to Manhattan because he had to move to Manhattan to get seen by the right people, to get on TV, to get the right gigs, to get money. Yeah. And he's like, now if you – if you do it right and if you want it enough, you can be seen from anywhere. You don't yeah. need to do that. That's it. Yeah, and I, I do believe that and I, I've talked to my partner about it and I'm, I'm willing to, you know, I've already made the sacrifice of losing a day's work to, to focus more on it and I'm willing to sacrifice by paying regular like trips to go to Sydney or Melbourne or Perth or Brisbane or whatever to get yeah. to get other gigs other than just Adelaide and she's happy for me to do it. She's willing to support me. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that and stay based in Adelaide because I love it here. Yeah, fuck it. It's such a nice spot here, man. Yeah. It really is. It's so chill here. The other good thing about having a podcast as well is that you are you have attention on you as a person mm -hmm. already and your brand, so to speak, um, and when people are emotionally invested in that in that character almost that they're seeing on the podcast, they want to then buy a ticket to come and see your show. And yeah. I think that's such a cool thing is that you're, you know, you're building an audience in something other than – and they're getting glimpses, you know, when they're listening to you riff and whatever, they get an idea of what they're going to – probably get when they're mm. coming to see your show so you know when you are starting to do bigger and, and whatever things you're able to fucking plug the shit out of that stuff and you've already got this this sample audience that are ready to to buy a ticket and they want to support you because that's the whole thing as well like you know when you're doing comedy and when you're just one of the other comedians 
you don't unless you really stand out, people that are in the crowd aren't getting invested in you as a person. They yeah. might go, when they go home, they're like, oh, there was this hilarious guy last night. They have no idea what the fuck you said because they've forgotten about it and they have no idea what your fucking name was. And so the chance of them then seeing that name in a fringe guide or whatever and going, oh yeah, that's that guy is so fucking slim. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I'm pretty lucky that I look like this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like for the fringe guide, but like I, I sort of, I don't, I don't give a fuck whether they remember what I say as long as they remember that I was funny, that they yeah. felt good from yeah. watching me. Yeah. I'd probably prefer that they don't remember what I said so then they will, if they come again, they'll laugh again. It's yeah. fresh. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It took at least five or six of his shows for me to remember his full set. Yeah. You know yeah. What yeah. I mean? oh, like, at it least. takes more than that for me to fucking remember my own <laughs> shit. Yeah. 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 No, that's, uh, that's cool, man. And, and so is... Is that something where, you know, you – so you want to stay based in Adelaide though, but you're just willing to travel and, and yeah. to do get the stage time and whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, came, back, I came back to Adelaide because I missed it. Like, yeah. 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 I, I, I was gone for 10 years um, and, yeah, this is just like – this is what I know and my friends and family are here. Like, you know, a lot of people – a lot of people don't leave Adelaide. Yeah. People, people that have never left, like – say that they've been trapped by it or whatever, but like it's not it's not a trap. It's fucking I fucking I love it. It's like yeah. top two cities in the world for me. Oh fuck yeah. this, dude. Yeah. Mm. Well like I have already been to America and Melbourne. I think that's it. That's literally it. And pff, both of them suck dick. So like <laughs> yeah. I've seen enough, right? I've seen Melbourne, which is like the hybrid, like a bigger city of the world kind of thing that I've yeah. been to the fucking the real chaos. And, and once man, you've seen I'll a city, sleepy. they're all the fucking same. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Like, oh, yeah, another skyscraper. Suck my dick. Like, yeah. It's just- yeah. And we're, we're at that size where, like, homelessness isn't a massive issue and, like, yeah, like I don't know, they call it the murder capital, but I think it's, I think it's more like the obscure murder capital. There's not yeah. like murders going on every night here. And stuff. No, like, no way. Yeah, it's just we've it's had weird shit. It's, you know, it's, it's big but it's small. Yeah. You can see the ocean, you can see the hill. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, exactly. Well, we right. we talked to that American last night, that dude out the front of the thing, and he's like, bro, I feel like my PTSD of living in America is like starting to wash away now that I've lived here for a year. Yeah. That's what he literally said True. to us last night. He's like, you know, yeah, right. Um, he's like, we just, I just got in an altercation over at the pub I was, and he's like, but I'm not worried about people pulling out guns and shit because it's, just, it's just, a, just a little thing that happened and I'm not yeah. stressed, whereas like at home, Anything that starts off as like a little bit of a war of words could end up in fucking bullets yeah. flying or something. Yeah, fuck, just man. insane to think of, man. Yeah. And it's it's only becoming it's only, we've never really had to worry about that, man. Nah, not Cheeky really. machete here or there. Like, you know, yeah. I've seen a couple of those. Cheeky flame throw here and there. I did, get, I did get shot at once. Have I told this on the podcast? No, I don't before? think you have, no. Um oh, we we were at this party that was so shit, and I wish that we just stayed there because what ended up happening was pretty fucking crazy. But there was a party happening in Brahma Lodge, and everyone who was there was messaging us like, "Come down, this shit's crazy," which was already an indication we fucking shouldn't have gone. Um, and so we pulled up and we parked around the corner. Mrs. One of our mates, Mrs. Drove us, and um, we we get onto the street where the party is and like there's 200 people out on the street yeah, and we're right. like, wow, this shit's fucking crazy. Project X. And then yeah. we're like, hold on a second. What that, that, all right, that dude's, that dude's got a baseball bat. That dude's got a meat cleaver. All right. Yeah. Maybe head back to the car. This looks like shit's not about to fucking kick off in the way we want it to. Fuck. So we turn around, start walking back towards the car and, and like we get maybe just around the first corner because we parked a couple of streets away from where it was. Um, and then we hear shit fucking kick off. You know, you hear that girl, echo of girl screaming and whatever else when shit. So obviously a fight's broken out. And then before we even get like another fucking few steps, you just hear cars starting up, burnouts fucking happening. And we're like, fuck man, shit really kicked off. <laughs> and so then as we get around to the street that we're on, a car, we hear a fucking car like coming tearing towards where we are. Um, and this statesman has like fucking kicked out sideways on this corner where we're standing with a dude like sitting on the window sill of his car, turned around facing us with a gun, just being like, I'll kill all you fucking whatever he called us and just started firing shots in our direction. What? And just like sprayed the fence near us. And uh, so it was like me, two blokes and, and the mate's missus. And one of the funniest things where we tell this story, because this is fucking 100% true, is that me and the two boys were like fucking huddled like next to each other like, I fucking love you, man. <laughs> like freaking out. I'm, I'm, maybe, I'm maybe 16 or 17, I reckon, as well. I'm young, dude. No shit. Um, and it was the girl. It was the missus who was like, 
Get in the fucking car, you dickheads. Like, what are you doing fucking down here crying? That's not going to fucking help you. Let's get out of here. She was the rational one in yeah. that moment. And us three oh. boys are like, if we, if we die tonight, I fucking love you, man. <laughs> um, and yeah, I never. So if mum and dad are listening, that was a real thing that happened um, that I never told them about because I was like, my, you wouldn't be allowed out anymore. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right? right that was yeah. exact. So, uh, and uh, and there'd already been a few other times that shit had got crazy. And I was like, man, if mum and dad knew what happens at some mm. of these fucking parties, oh, yeah, fuck they hell. would never let me out. And uh, and that just cemented that for me. Yeah. But then it, it kind of freaks you out for a bit because then, or like, so many parties just like you don't have house parties anymore because of what happened at house parties when we were younger and probably even younger yeah. than that and now that like now that it's your house and you understand like <laughs> yeah you're like I'm not <laughs> having 50 cunts yeah. 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 I remember I went to one one time where the these group of fucking rowdy blokes went out into the shed found a whole heap of paint cans and just started walking through the house pouring the paint cans out on the floor carpet like just everything and we're just like ha 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 and left the party nah dude I'm a that I, is I, I was a Insane. I was a fighter when I was younger, so that yeah. would have been a problem. Yeah. yeah. I had a guy, I don't remember if, like what age birth. I might have been going away party even, but um, a friend of mine spat on the floor inside my mum's house. Oh, bro. And I just, I just fucking lost. I kicked everyone out and I was ready to fucking just smash these kind of my friend yeah but I you don't be like, spitting on your mum's floor yeah, bro yeah, no that's, just so, wild. that's such a dog yeah. act man but like now everyone knows MMA so I'm just like yeah, yeah. yeah. oh you just called me the N word okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fist bump yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. it. No, up. I got, I've got fucking anger problems, man. So when it happens, I've just got to go home. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, if I Because it's not worth the trouble, bro. It yeah, really isn't. Yeah. And yeah, who knows that you're going to end up in some fucking court case and, you know, yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, like. yeah. Everyone, everyone's an MMA fighter. So I'm just like, I'll, well, I'll it's let this even... shit get to me and I'll, I'll start shit and then I'll get my fucking ass kicked. And it's not it's the fucking everyone's doing jujitsu as well. Yeah. So they look like the scorniest dude, but they'll literally snap your neck yeah. in half. That's the shit that scares me. Yeah. Man. Triangle choking me out when I'm on top of them about to punch him and I yeah, end up dude. asleep, dude. Yeah. I'm not Could I look it. any more bitch than that? Right? <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna help my comedy worse. career. <laughs> no, it probably will <laughs> help your comedy career. Yeah, yeah, actually, that'd be a good story to so tell. So should we fling a few questions? Yeah, let's get the questions. We're in uh we're, we're 51 minutes deep, bro. We're 51 fucking... minutes deep. All right, uh, what's the first? Well, the first one we always ask uh, mm. is what is, and it's a difficult one, but we fucking love it. What is your favourite song of all time? Mm, that is a difficult one. And we always say that you can give us two or three yeah. if you can't if make you can't a decision. If you can't get the one Because we want, if you can't get the one, and but give us a few of your absolute fucking all times. But if you can pick one ultimate one, that's what we love. Um, shit, I think, I think, Maybe it would have to be it would have to be Big L. Okay, Big yeah, L. yeah. Uh, Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous, maybe. Mm. Yeah, not quite Very. the Good Charlotte song, but uh. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, we got you know we got Crows, we got <laughs> Good Charlotte. I don't think we're going. Oh, I'm not gonna... saying I like. Oh. I just remember that song, Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous by Good Charlotte. You yeah, yeah, that yeah, one? yeah, that's yeah. what I just made okay. me think of that. Yeah, yeah. right. Not, not a massive uh, good Charlotte. Okay. They probably look like the fucking epitome of. Well, one, you know, though, you said you had an emo fringe, so yeah, but that, they're not even. I don't even know what they were. Bro. I don't they're know. Not, I don't know anything. Were they about emo? Them. Were they just I fucking toys? I think they were just toys. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they were just toys. <laughs> fucking yeah. toys, bro. Yeah. Um. All right. Is that, so that's the that's the. Have L. you got any? I reckon that's it. Right. Um. Any runners up? Uh when I be on the mic by Rakim. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. You like your old school hip hop? I do bro. like my yeah. my old school hip hop. Yeah. Sugar Hill Gang. Um, yeah, I mean, I respect Sugar Hill Gang. That's yeah. not that, that's, that's not like, like that's like OG OG, bro. Yeah, like, that's, that's not something that I'm like bumping in my car or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, do you like your Biggie then? Biggie Park. Favorite Biggie song? Hit me. Ooh, Machine Gun Funk. Classic. Mm. Yeah, classic. That is a great song. Biggie or Puck, who, who's, your, who's your favourite out of those two? Mine would be Puck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah right. What about, um, you, what about you? I don't think we've ever asked this. Yeah, I don't think we have. I'm a Biggie man. Yeah, me I too. Just, his, me too. his flow the way and just the fact that it was such a different thing for the way and had that very like Jamaican in, influence and just it was just something yeah. that always – or the lyricism and that just always blew my mind. And that's what yeah, anything that's with yeah. rap for me is always lyricism that's just like, fuck, But dude, Tupac, like, I will give it to him, was like the most intelligent dude on the face of the earth. Yeah. Oh, his, his, his bars were like 
making you think, whereas Biggie's yeah. bars were more like painting a story and like yeah. taking you down yeah. like a way. And part, like the emotion that he would like. I felt like he was exhausted at the end of the song. Like he would, yeah. just, he would fucking was so scream much fucking. on it. Like, yeah. Uh, have you watched the documentary that they recently put up on Netflix, the Biggie one? The no, no, story I didn't tell? watch that one. Watch the fuck out yeah, of it. Yeah. So the, uh, they've done a lot of shit over the years that's just been like, oh, uh, whereas what made this one so good is that it was Biggie's mum. It was uh, fucking P. Diddy. It was all of those rappers from fucking... Um, Junior Mafia, yep. like everyone that he grew up with and they didn't focus on the death and the war. Like they obviously touched on it, but it was just about his whole upbringing. Okay. It was about the drug selling. It was about the fucking him getting into music and, you know, choosing to sell fucking crack over the start of his music career because it was just way more profitable mm. and uh, all of that stuff where it was just shit that you've never really got to hear anything about and when it was coming from people who you can really believe that they know the fucking story because they're not just some white dude fucking yeah. being like, yeah, for, I have yeah. from un so un Ambar good sources yeah. that <laughs> these were the things that were happening on the streets, you know, yeah. it, it it, it, it was such a incredible thing to watch and just – me and uh, my partner talk about it all the time. Like there's certain times in music that will just never be repeated or yeah. were never done before. And that whole like East Coast, West Coast rivalry and the the passion that people have for music or had for music and, and that kind of music is just something you, you just won't see again. Yeah. yeah. It was so, it was so crazy. People were willing to fucking live and die for the, for the love that they had. And yeah. they talk about it all the time where like, you know, his mum when they're driving the her or behind the hearse or whatever, and she sees the fucking hundred thousand people out yeah. in the streets, like pumping his music out of a boombox. We won't see that happen for another nah, fucking artist, nah. man. Like nah. that's Michael Jackson's funeral was pretty lit. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think me, I'm saying something like that, or yeah. even a Michael Jackson. I don't think we'll see that kind of response nah. to a to an artist in, in the modern era. No, nah. especially because it's all it's all quick money now. Yeah, that's yeah. And well, that's the problem. I that's like yeah. Everyone, yeah. everyone, no one's in it for the love of the of the game anymore it's like it's a payday yeah you're seeing the talent level drop off and the the payday go up yeah, so, yeah. and that's the problem man there's no nothing in the mainstream and look obviously we're massive metalheads and i think the reason what we that we have such a love for metal is that you've got talented people in whatever it is you know they're playing guitar quicker than any other fucking genre they're hitting the drums quicker than any other fucking drum like all of these people that are making this thing that it's not for everyone but the one thing that is consistent through all of metal is that you have to have talent to a certain level for you to be able to be something that is popular in that genre right mm. anyone can do it fast or do it whatever but to be able to be it technically and then have the production and have all of that stuff to make it something that you know, we enjoy at the yeah, top level. Yeah, yeah. It's talent. That's mm. what I, I it, you can't, and it's the same with, the, you know, the rap game, the stuff that sticks out for me is not the shit that's fucking mainstream and the mumble. You know, you find the people that are still just doing really good lyricism and, and doing whatever. It's not getting money. It's not getting that mainstream attention, but it's getting love from from me and you because it's fucking talent that, yeah. that is there. Um, and talent's not getting money anymore, man. Nah. You know, yeah. it's it's if, if you're marketable- It's all, it's all, design, it's all designed. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, is that, like Jimmy Iovine was- a ge is sorry, he's you know he's still doing it. He's a genius. He created Fergie and put her in the Black Eyed Peas. He created Gwen Stefani. He created uh, uh, Dr. Dre. Yeah, but like because he showed that you can manifest these these figures, people are doing that. Yeah, people are doing it themselves. SoundCloud rappers are branding their face. Yeah. Uh, because that's that's selling right yeah. now. Yeah, and so yeah. you're yeah people people are addicted to someone with red braids and face tattoos, um, and you know diamonds in their teeth, not what they're actually listening to. Yeah, and they even uh, there was I was watching a, an interview where they were like, you can't even you have to be fucking drinking lean. Yeah, in your in your video, yeah. you're making a video. If you're not sipping lean, they're not fucking watching it. Yeah, and it's like the, it's, it's like it's so a, it's much about the image because it used to, you know, back to Biggie and Park. It's like you have to have guns and spinners in your videos. Yeah, yeah. And now it's just like, and then it went to like, um, you know, weed when yeah. Dr. Dre did the Chronic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and then and now yeah, is gone to lean and pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there was always exactly. that thing, but the the difference was is that back in that time there was still talent. That's what was yeah. The ones that were making money were also the ones that were doing those things, but they also were the most talented. Whereas that's not even a that's not one of the things that they're looking for now. Yeah, it's literally the most marketable that also ticks all of those generic exactly. boxes, which is just insane. And it, and it's crazy to me that it, it's not something that enough people. Can't even seem to care about. Like it's yeah. almost like everyone knows that it is the case, but they still just keep pumping this fucking mainstream because because garbage. Like social media and the like, the attention span so low. It's like you probably not you. The people that are listening to these motherfuckers aren't even probably listening to their whole songs because they don't have the the fucking the, capacity. They're to, listening to yeah. a chorus and that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it's that fucking. Uh, have you ever got into the comedian Bo Burnham? You ever heard of him before? Yeah, I'm not like I'm not really into that style, but yeah, I recognize his talent for sure. Oh, when he does a song called Repeat Stuff, and it's just, the whole song is about that exact thing where yeah. you know it, these days you just have to make a song that's void of all things and yeah. uh, and and just has that re- catchy chorus that you're gonna fucking listen to, and it's just great. It's just such a perfect uh, description of of what it's like these days. Mm. Um, and that actually segues into our next into question. The next question. I was just about to do <laughs> Who's it. your favourite comedian? Yeah, it could be a co- comic actor, comedian. Yeah, it could be just, actor. Yeah. Comedian. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. I guess like all time, probably you're looking at like Dave Chappelle. Classics. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, Bill Burr. Yeah. Um, If you're looking at like... More up and coming, but still like real famous. I, I love Mark Norman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Sam Marill over in New York. Yeah. Tom Segura. Oh yeah, man, I'm in a LA. Big. Do you uh do you get around uh, Two Bears One Cave? Uh, I I listen to it. Um, I don't like I don't like talking shit about comedians just in case like something happens one day. Yeah. <laughs> <That's such laughs> a- I'm, I'm not I'm not a fan of Bert. Oh, see, I love Bert, man. Yeah, I no, think it's... yeah. The, the machine story is yeah, actually one of the funny it, funny it things. Oh, yeah, he does my head in. Yeah, yeah wow. Right. Okay. Is it just because he laughs at fucking everything? Laughs or? at everything and maybe you know, yeah, I don't really like his stand up either. Yeah, wow. But like um on two bears like just just interrupting Tom just constantly. Yeah, okay. And yeah. Tom, like, who I'd want to hear talk. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, it's it's probably a bit of that, but I've never been a fan of his stand-up either, really. And, yeah, um, uh, yeah I kind of regret even talking about that now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> nah, look, you, look, we, we're fine. here for the raw truth. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah but, right. like, you know, it'd be nice but you to don't fucking, hate the guy. You I'd, just, I'd go on the Burt cast any, 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 yeah, any of course. second if I oh, got yeah, a chance, like, you know? Dude, I fucking love you. Yeah. I love how you just laugh at everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. see, I really, um, the, the video that they uh, put up and it's got, like, fucking stupid views where uh, Tom realises that that water bottle he's drinking is Gatorade. Yeah. Uh, is fucking Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Yeah. Bro, if I'm in a bad mood, like, and I love it, see... Big Al, you know Big Al. Yeah. So I used to work with him. He got me into comedy and he's got the, the fucking Burt laugh. Yeah. Like he's got that kind of like we'll laugh stupidly at anything. I love those kind of people, man. Like it's impossible for, for you to not be cheered up by hearing them fucking laugh at something. Yeah. So I thought I'd get a bit of that vibe from Burt when I listen to him. But I do agree sometimes. I'm like, that's not that funny, dude. That was not even really anything. And now you're crying. Like yeah. you're actually crying. So, um, but yeah, I fucking, I, I do enjoy, I think Tom's, his weird sort of like dark humor is he's right up my fucking alley. Yeah, yeah, I love it, and he he matches my sort of stage energy yeah. as well. Very low yeah. energy, and yeah, yeah. See, he uh, so my favorite stand up comic of all time is Louis C.K. Oh. And I find I get a fair bit of Louis from Tom. I find that there's a lot of that the yeah. way they just talk about life, and it's that very cynical. Uh, and self-deprecating, but still fuck everyone else. Yeah, that that way of uh, that is my absolute favorite style of comedy. Um, and I think that Tom is kind of like the the evolved version of Louis C.K. Because yeah. unfortunately, he's like, like a more mainstream version. Yeah, because he's he's probably a bit sillier than Louis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and Louis, like again now, unfortunately, like Louis, the my f- two favorite of his, which is Shameless and Chewed Up, which are 05 and 08, That shit doesn't. 
get made in 2021, man. No. You know, um, no, just like it, with all things, you know, it's the same with Delirious. Delirious. Man. Like Watching fucking. F word, F word, F word, yeah. The, yeah, just homophobic slur yeah. after homophobic yeah. slur. Doesn't yeah. get, uh, yeah, yeah. doesn't make it to release on uh, in 2021. Yeah. Um, and is there an actor, as someone like a, so not a comedian, just a, a comic actor. That, comic you know, actor. Yeah. Um, Jonah Hill sort of moved on from it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Vince Vaughn, I think. Yeah, well, you know, yeah he's, he's the same now. in everything, but yeah. he's so fucking good at it. He the, does it well. The fast talking thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, if he's, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't really deep dive enough to know whether he's ad libbing a lot of that stuff or not. But it feels but if like he, he is, is it's is a genius. Yeah, yeah. Um, same with Will Ferrell, who is ad libbing a lot. Yeah, of Yeah, Will Ferrell. Oh, so good. We yeah. talk. He gets brought up on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, he does. Him and Seth Rogen get brought up a lot. Yeah, yeah, Seth Rogen's great. I love. Um, uh, Amy Poehler. Oh yeah, well. okay. I think Parks and Rec and stuff. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. she's great. Yeah, she's a, Parks and Rec is one of my fucking fat Chris Pratt dude is just yeah, it, like what a man he yeah. is in that show. He's the best. Yeah, uh, he reminds he's like a um like a modern Jack Black in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really is. Yeah, Jack Black's another one who I fucking oh, yeah. School of Rock. I watch probably three times a year. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. He, that, we talked about that we last, about week. School of Rock yeah. last week. I love, yeah. I love that there are like themes. Like you you talked about some music that's never been brought up tonight. So yeah. that's good. Like I love that. Like <laughs> some questions will have completely fucking far reaching answers. Yeah. But sometimes we're just going to talk about Will Ferrell. That's and it. School of Rock. Yeah, dude. That's it, that's it. I didn't. I didn't get to say this last week. You know, what my, one of my favorite uh, Will Ferrell cameos, and I feel like this might have been something that kind of almost launched his career, mm. uh, is uh, Austin Powers Two. Do you know the Will Ferrell cameo where he's the assassin that tries to? Yeah, M- Mufasa. Yeah, well, I think that's um, it. And when he falls like falls down the cliff, and he's like, yeah. "I think my leg is broken." Yeah, because I'll try and stand up on the other one. <laughs> oh, and then like later on, he's like, "It's getting gangrenous now." Oh, yeah. just such a good, <laughs> stupid as fuck cameo. I was yeah. like, "How could you not want that in more movies yeah. and a long form?" I think Old School is the other one that really. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. Fucking yeah, great yeah. We're movie going streaking too. like really fucking blew him up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a good scene. Yeah, Frank yeah. the Tank, man. Frank, Frank the, the fucking tank. tank. Yeah. Um. All right. What's the next question? Next question is, I think, ah, oh, if you could have a superpower, what is it? What would it be? Third invisibility. Yep. Uh, I have. I've never been diagnosed, but I know that I've got social anxiety to the nth degree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't help being this size and having every fucking random cunt come up to me and tell me I'm tall. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, so invisibility for me would yeah. be a dream. It's crazy and, that, and that, sorry. That, sorry that, that's really weird because um, the, one of the guests we had last week said the same thing. Mm. But he said it for a completely different reason. You're saying invisibility because you want to not be involved in things. And mm. he said so that he could be involved in things and hear things and stand in the yeah, room. I've and a, yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Imagine someone's about to, like I'm what, what I'm imagining is someone's like, hey man, do you get no and you're just like gone and they're yeah. like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. what they don't know is that you're standing there like, yeah. just, yeah. like fucking breathing on them, dude. That'd be <laughs> so good. Air, like, yeah. That'd be so good. They just feel the air and they smell the bung bung bean. Like, yeah. 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 And then all of a sudden you just hear bung bung. <laughs> oh yeah. dude. No, people ask about that like, oh what like why do you do stand up comedy then? I'm like, well, that's not socializing. That's yeah. That's a one way conversation, and then I'm then I disappear while you watch the next person. I'm in the back of the room, and you know, yeah, that's it's not. It's just not even close to reality. It's not yeah. And I think that you're that's a very good example of of what we don't understand about mental health. And obviously, you probably know we love talking about it a lot on this podcast. Mm. But for a lot of people, would look at you objectively, right, and not think that that's something that you struggle with at all, right? Mm-hmm. When you look at um, has has travelled, uh, like lived out of, away from family, yep. away from what is known as a safe place or, or somewhere where they would obviously feel more comfortable for a large portion of their life. Yeah. Played a, a sport that is, you know, fucking social as fuck. You know, yeah. you're constantly on this court surrounded by people. There's crowds. It's just, it, it's, it's a somewhere where, you know, again, you're not going to necessarily think that's someone who's anxious. Then you're doing podcasting, which, again, not so much for you in doing your solo one, Mm. but you come out and do 
this and you're doing guests or whatever, which is yeah. obviously social, and then you're doing stand-up comedy. So f- to look at that objectively and, and to, I guess... So that's a man that needs validation. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> but you, but you I need to be clapped at at all times. <laughs> yeah. Just don't fucking speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, man. Like a lot of people wouldn't look at that as the as the rap sheet or the the you know the stat sheet of someone who would be feeling like they would like to be able to disappear at any moment. And I guess that's probably, as I said, something that you we don't understand really the depth of or, of it. That there is no one size fits all for mm. who struggles with it because you know yeah, there'll be yeah. someone who couldn't possibly move away from home or live away from home or couldn't possibly do stand-up comedy or couldn't possibly start a podcast, but in a social setting they fucking thrive. Yeah. So it's like the, these kind of things that we would naturally att- uh, attribute to someone who's not struggling, it, it, there's no fucking norm. There's no one-size-fits-all. Um, and, yeah, I think that's a fucking perfect example of it, man. So yeah. have, you, yeah. have you found, though, that – doing some of these things has helped in a way? Like have you found that you've been able to build a confidence in yourself through doing stand-up and through doing a podcast and whatever that allows you to feel more comfortable? I don't know because it's – it's uh, the po- the podcast is – I think it – I don't think the podcast really uh, can – because it is just me in a room. Yeah. yeah. It's almost and, more isolating. Yeah, in a way, even though, yeah. you know, hundreds of people listen – it's still it's still just me. Yeah. Um, and it's it's less intimidating than uh, stand up comedy, obviously, because people aren't looking at me. I don't have to hit hit punch lines or marks. I just go in and I talk just utter rubbish. So that that hasn't helped. I think there's, you know, the like we were talking about the politics of comedy. Like you have to talk to certain people to get yeah. gigs. Um. So, you know, I, there's – I'm probably not making friends at a rapid pace in comedy. I've got a few people that I, I talk to. Um, but, like, it's a it's an uh, affliction that people that don't suffer from it will never understand. Yeah. yeah. And my partner is one of them. I'm going to – I'm actually – we've just – we had a bit of disagreement on the weekend because of my behaviour because I was feeling a certain type of way in a social setting. Uh, and she just can't understand it. So I'm actually breaking it down on the podcast um, this weekend. So if anyone wants to listen to Welcome to the Potty. Um, but, like, it is debilitating yeah, at yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And I, because I know what's seen as normal, I try to be that from the, from the start. But after about 10 minutes, it's drained me and I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. And, and I'm... I'm in my head, I'm thinking, you've got to be normal, you've got to figure this out. Yeah. And while I'm having this internal dialogue, I'm not responding to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And people are like, what the fuck's wrong with this cunt? Yep. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it just gets, so instead of actually getting better, I get worse because yep. every every time I'm in a social setting, I'm putting more pressure on myself yep. to be normal. And every second longer that you haven't figured it out for is then another second that your brain's going, you haven't figured it out yet. It's only yeah. getting worse. It's only getting worse. And then that just compounds. Yep. So then five minutes into that time, you're in fucking complete shutdown mode. Yeah. And, and the, to try and bring yourself back from that is a, you know, a near impossible task. Yeah. And people, yeah, people that don't get it don't help. Like, um, I'm not trying to put my partner on blast. I love her. Of course, she loves me. Of course. She um with many occasions she's she's said, You've got like, what are you doing? Like, do you hate my friends? You gotta do better, blah, blah, blah. And then that only and makes then, the next time you go into one of those settings yeah, it's, already it's, fucking anxious. It's pressure, it's yeah. pressure. I'm already putting pressure on myself. Yeah. You're putting pressure on me, plus now I think that your friends think I'm weird. So now I'm saying now they need to make sh- you need to make sure that they don't think you're weird. So it's just like this vicious cycle and then like I had this interaction with a woman that I think is in the comedy world maybe not from Adelaide it was at fringe last year before COVID hit the fan yeah and like you know we're looking at 12 14 months later right now and I still remember this clear as day which is a problem she I guess maybe thought she was giving me advice but hasn't done me any favours. So she came up and spoke to me um, in the the bar area of a comedy room um, 
I think I was getting ready to do a gig or something. So I'm already sort of in my own zone trying to go over my shit in my head. And she comes over to me and talks and I'm sort of coy or whatever and I'm talking back a little bit uh, and I kind of just like stopped. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I hit that point where I didn't know how to carry on. Yep. And she says, so she she obviously had some sort of background because she recognised it and she says, I don't care how much social anxiety you've got, you need to talk to people. You have, you never know who you're speaking to. Yeah, okay. She really put and, it on the spot. Yeah, and so 14 months later, I'm sitting in this chair remembering this. Yeah. So that's, that's still a pressure on me from over a year ago. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's not, that's not a helpful thing to do regardless no. of, and, you know, I haven't seen this lady since. I, don't, I still don't know who she is. Yeah. And it's like, Stuck it with affects you. me. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And that's where the, uh, just what you were saying about the partner stuff and look, I, I understand this on a great level in reverse because I've been someone who has been on the other side of it. I've been the partner and I've not dealt with it as well in previous relationships and I've grown a vast understanding of it through my failures or whatever in those times and now feel like I manage it pretty well to the point that with a partner who struggles in all the same ways that you've just explained mm. and now I, I approach it completely differently and that's the thing is that the last thing that she needs or that you need in those settings is any additional pressure. You have to, as the person that's not suffering that is trying to help them, you've got to try and remove as many of those fucking blocks or weights or whatever you want to call them as possible yeah. and allow that person to go into that situation feeling as free as they possibly can yeah. because that's the only chance that you've got of them being able to thrive in that. And, you know, I've watched her have so many wins in the time that we've been together because that's the thing is that if you can go into a setting with not a lot of pressure and then things go well, you can start to, and we talk about this all the time, to build that that thing up to carry into that next setting, right? Yeah. Because then when it goes well, you're like, well, you know, because I wasn't so fucking already stressed before I went into it, I just kind of had a fucking casual time and I, and I didn't overthink everything and I enjoyed myself. And then you're like, I can do that again. Yeah. You, you, you start to be able to believe in that ability and then that can snowball into something greater. But it's so fucking hard if every time I was going to her or like you said, I'm being like, can you be fucking normal tonight? That is the worst starting point that she can possibly have because yeah. before we've even opened the car door or got off the fucking Uber where we're going, that's already just yeah imprinted in her brain that yeah. I'm expecting her to do something. And the idea of like making someone else feel like you're not a certain way, I don't care whether you suffer with anything. That's an impossible task yeah. because you have no fucking idea what their version of you they're looking for to make them feel better about how they feel about you. Yeah. Is that yeah. not the most fucking retarded premise yeah. that anyone like? That's I, get, I get the frustration like, because if you if you love someone and you're comfortable with them and you let your guard down and you can be silly and funny and charming, you know, ninety percent of the time, and then then you're not all of a sudden they're like, what? Who the fuck is this? Yeah, guy? exactly right. But it's like the reason I'm with you is because I feel free enough to be that way, and the reason I'm not with these people That's is because I don't. I don't. Yeah, because yeah, you haven't developed that kind of like closeness with them. Yeah, you know? and it's yeah. like it's like. And in, and at home, it's also just you and me. It's not forty people. Yeah. yeah. And like, maybe no one in here gives a fuck about me, but it feels like it's all eyes on me, especially being this fucking big. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And I used to like, as I said, I, I, in in retrospect, I used to be quite, but like I used to have this weird thing where I, again, every time I'd go out to town, I thought I was going to get my head kicked in. Mm. And so I like, I, there would only be certain times that I knew I felt comfortable because I had certain big mates with me that I felt like I could go out and I would be okay. Yeah. Or the same thing. I just felt like people were always, and I didn't even realize that that was like a, a, a level of anxiety that yeah. I had as an 18 year old until we started talking about it on the podcast and shit. Mm. And like I said, this, this whole thing that, or why we always focus on this is because just like we've said about, you know, you would look at you objectively and probably not think that that's something that you're struggling with. Mm. Or like I've just said, re not even realise that it was something I was suffering with at a certain point in my life. I thought it was just teen growing, you know what I mean? Just growing thing. You've never been out before, so that's why it's a little bit weird. No, I was actually fucking struggling with anxiety. I thought everyone was going to fucking want to kick my head in. Like that's a weird thing to have. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And I just had no idea. Never talked about it, never tried to address it, never said a word to anyone, just fucking internalised the fuck out of it until, again, I went out enough and nothing ever happened yeah. or I was the person being a drunk dickhead and probably deserved to get my yeah. fucking head kicked in that I was like, well, you can't really be worried about it when you're putting yourself in these situations, fuckhead. Yeah. And it yeah. slowly, you know, dissipated over time and I, and I built that confidence. But a lot of people don't even have an awareness that they're, that they're struggling with it. Yeah. And so if you think about that, you're hyper aware of it and you've explained it really well. So then you think about someone who isn't aware that that's what they're struggling with and then they've got that partner or family member or whatever putting pressure on them. Think of, and Then this they is what, just think that they're a weirdo, you know? And this is what we don't talk about so much and we have probably never talked about this. You're talking about it as a 20, 30-year-old adult and, mm-hmm. and with your partner. But that exact thing that you've just described happens to five-year-old, seven-year-old, 12-year-old, when we go to this fucking birthday party, don't be a fucking weirdo tonight. I have heard that from friends, parents and whatever f- so much. Yep. It's in movies. It's in fucking whatever. Like they, that is such a normal thing for people to be having pressure put on them because they need to be a certain way because you're worried about people's opinions of your fucking daughter or son or whatever or your partner. Mm-hmm. So you're already throwing all of that on them and then expecting them to just be able to rock up and perform the way and dance the fucking dance that you want them to yeah. when you go to this thing. That is what starts. That's where it starts uh, as a kid and then that manifests into something that you're now dealing with that third. 30 years old, you know, yeah. it's fucking insane to think of that. So I hope that as a society and the more that we have these conversations that we can kind of fucking stop that a bit in its tracks and, yeah. and take those weight plates and that pressure off and just be like, look, go and just try and have a good time. Who gives a fuck what people are thinking? Yeah. Who gives a fuck whether they're thinking you're this or thinking you're that? I know what you are. I know how amazing you are. And if you try your best to just enjoy yourself, I'm sure that everyone's going to feel the same. That's not going to work all the time. But no. if that's the... If that's the advice you're being given before you're going into every social situation, you've got a hell of a more chance of fucking enjoying yourself than yeah. being like, don't be a fucking weird cunt tonight for once like, in your life. Just like, just be patient and say like, hey, if you need if you need to like come over to me at any time, just do it. Yeah. You know? Because you don't, I also don't want someone fucking coming up to me and saying, are you all right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay? I don't want that either. Yeah. Like if you can see it, if you can recognize it, come over, make a joke or something. Like bring me out of it. Yeah. Distract me. Yeah. You know. Yep. Like let's just come over and talk to me. I'm like you know as a partner, someone that is familiar, not not all you random cunts that want to come and call me yeah. tall and call me tall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just come and distract me. Come and tell me a joke. You know. But yeah. Yeah. Be be patient. That's yeah. The yeah. That's main it. thing. It's, it's, not, it's all patience. Like, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, that's one of the, another thing that I've said to like, cause it, it gets even deeper than that, where I remember my partner was like, well, I don't want to just be hanging off of you. Like, and mm-hmm. then you're going to, I'm like, you do whatever the fuck you need to do. Yeah. Whatever is going to make you feel better. I'm like, wrap yourself fucking around me. Like, show yourself whatever you got to do to, to help you. Like, and I said, you know that I'm going to be fucking bouncing around from pillar to post. Cause I'm the life of the party, wherever we're going. Yeah. So fucking be in my shadow. I don't give a fuck. I'm never going to be like, Oh my God, can you go over there? Yeah. Just, Cause imagine <laughs> how that's going to fucking make her feel right. Yeah. So I'm like, you or do how you're going to look. <laughs> yeah. 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 Be like, oh, do you fucking wow, yeah, personal you see how space. Justin was treating his wife. Yeah. 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 Um, but even like, you know, when we get home or whatever, I'm never going to be like, oh, did you fucking not find a friend the whole time we're there or something? Yeah. No, I'm like, no, you do, you fucking be in my shadow as much as you need to. And, to, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about you or, or bring you into every conversation as much as possible because they're all important things. Because yeah. if, if she's behind me and I don't mention her for fucking four hours of a party, well, then I'm a dick as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, they're like, oh, who's that? Oh, yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about her. Anyway, I'm a comedian, right? So uh, <laughs> yeah. listen to my podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that's, uh, this is what I fucking love, bro. Because we've yeah. just, again, we've talked shit most of this fucking episode. Look, and this leads and into the next, an, to the... another question as well. We, we don't ask everybody, but I feel like now's a good time to yeah, ask this. Yeah, fuck yeah. Have have, have you ever meditated before? Meditated? Uh, yeah, I have. Um, doesn't really, yeah. I, I hear this all the time. I work in mental health as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and meditating is something that I often recommend, even though it didn't really work for me. Hasn't thus far. Yeah. Um, I forget what the one is called that did work for me. Um, yeah, I'm not going to think of it. Transcendental maybe? No, no. It's, it's just the body scanning. Okay, I haven't heard of that before. So it's just like you you start at your feet and you you basically just relax every muscle 
um, in your body and you start, you focus on your big toe, your second toe. Right. And then the top, the ball of your foot down to the, the heel and then your shins, your calves, you move up your body as you relax. Just like everything. conscious, conscious like thinking. Yeah, yesterday. and it's, yeah. so you, you're not really thinking about anything except relaxing your muscles and more often than not, you won't even make it to like your facial muscles before you fall asleep or yeah. something. So hmm. that's, that one has worked for me. I've never used anything with a mantra or anything like that. Yeah. Guided med- meditation sort of annoy me. So you've never, you've never heard of binaural beats before? No. So I think, I think we've talked about this like on another yeah. episode before. There's this, there's this thing called binaural beats and you, you need headphones though because it doesn't work otherwise. Mm-hmm. And what it is is in one ear it'll play, let's say, 100 hertz and in the other ear it'll play like 103 hertz, let's say, right? And the difference between 100 and 103, that 3 hertz, um, tr- kind of like tricks your brain because like your brain runs on frequencies and the different like, you know how like when you're like in your case, you'd be in the middle of like, you know, your basketball match and you're like, all right, and you're, you're really hot and you've just like scored like a mad three. What you At that point in time, your brain is like producing gamma um, ray, like gamma wave. Yeah. And when you're in deep, deep sleep, it produces like delta wave and they each have their own frequency. Yeah. So what these binaural beats do is like based on the difference between what's in the right ear and in the left ear, it encourages your brain to go along that frequency. Right. Yeah. So you can like kind of like tune in. So there's like a delta, which is like one hertz or whatever. And there's like alpha. Then there's like beta, which is what probably we'd be in now. Like your waking consciousness, your working consciousness. Then there's like gamma when you really like feel like you're in the zone, you know? Yeah. Yep. So and, th- and those binaural beats can really like help like activate that mode. So it's, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. So and it's just like a uh, you know it's kind of like an unusual but you, and you're not listening to like a instructions. There's none of that breathe or anything. You're just listening the to these this yeah. tone. Yep. Um, and then obviously you know you just try and employ all the normal you know focus on your breathing and try not to be thinking about the fact that you're meditating or whatever and just focus on what you're hearing, what you're feeling, and and your breath. And I, I've found that that's something that that has worked for me. Breath yeah. Amphetamines. Breath, breath amph- amphetamines. Wow. Baby. Dude. <laughs> have we not? Th- have we not thought of that? I've thought of that. Fuck, man. (laughs) For all the amphetamine based puns that we've done. Um, (laughs) Yeah, wow. Breath amphetamines. That's fucking great. Yeah, that's that's my type of meditation. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, no, I find like if I'm if I'm stressed out and I uh, I play video games, not not video games. I play 2K. Yeah, I get very frustrated if I play like Call of Duty. So that's not my meditation. But 2K, I can I can usually play 2K and just forget about the world. Yeah, killer. And um, so. Even though I'm still active and my mind's active while I do it and stuff like that, it'll it'll definitely get me to a place where I'm like pretty calm and yeah, like chilled. Yeah, yeah. So like that's pretty much my version of um But that's cool though, because it really is. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it is you're doing or how you're doing it. If you're getting the the results in the end, that's what you want. Yeah. So and whether that's playing two K or listening to bar and all beats or saying um, you know, it doesn't yeah, matter, you know. Because I um my partner comes from a transcendental meditation family. Okay. Uh, and they've pushed it um, pretty hard to me. Like it's it's so at this point for me it's a bit cultish. Okay. It's like almost it's a bit of a force. Yep. Um, and yeah, like I I know how much it costs to like get your mantra and all of that. And yeah, I'm, you just like yeah, it's I'm it's a little really, it's got a little bit of like pretension to it, I guess. Yeah. yeah it just yeah, it doesn't really seem as wholesome as meditation is supposed to be. Yeah. 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 And that's where, I mean, as I said, something like binaural beats is like you find a good YouTube one that seems to fucking thing and there's no, you know, you've probably got headphones at home so there's not a lot of cost or or cultish um, thing to it. Um, But... I agree 100,000% about the gaming thing and I've talked about this on the podcast before but gaming has been my my meditation, my escapism mechanism for the longest time mm. because it's exactly that. If I'm watching a TV show or I'm watching a movie, I can be watching it and fucking lost in a train of I owe this money, I fucking yeah. I need to like pay this It's like when you read, bill. you read a whole page and you're like, I read that but I didn't yeah. read that. Because my brain yeah. was doing a million yeah, other so things. Yeah, you can reread it. Yeah, that's, mm. that can easily happen watching a movie. Whereas even playing, like even shooting games and shit, like uh, it doesn't really matter the game because I'm so focused on if it is a shooting game, I'm focused on killing that motherfucker. Mm. Or, also, get so fucking. I'm like bullshit. Like yeah, the that shooting does happen. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That does happen. When you when you unload a whole <laughs> clip into him and he comes and gets you with two bullets, you're just like, right. and, and you're playing on some on American you? server, so that fucking 300 millisecond <laughs> yeah, lag means yeah. that he gathered you four minutes ago. Yeah, oh. yeah, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's definitely not the best one for it, but. It, <laughs> But in terms of that, it doesn't matter for me as because even if I am angry at 
that motherfucker, that's a passing thing, right? Yeah. And then the next time when I kill him three times, the fucking rise from that is like the mo- you know, gamma as fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's I'm not thinking about whatever's going on because I, I I have to give everything to that to whatever that activity is or whatever that game is. Um, that you know. I'm not thinking about work tomorrow until it's like a le- you know I'm like I gotta go to bed now. But in that two hour whatever it is block that I'm playing for, I'm not fucking stressed about anything. Yeah. Right? Just get um, hit with that gamma hammer. Just get yeah. hit with that gamma, gamma hammer, baby. Fuck, dude. <laughs> You're like Bro, I fucking, consider myself fuck, like pretty man. good at the fucking puns and <laughs> shit. But you have you have just laid down the gauntlet. <laughs> I have to step my game up, bro. I'm gonna be in a dungeon writing fucking puns. He's I'm gonna be in the pungeon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck yeah. Yeah. One back for oh, me. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Let's start. Let's give him the final question and we'll Let's and we'll wrap this we'll up wrap at the up. hour 30. Hit me. Um the final question, my man, is would you rather fight a horse side? I always have to like fucking you have, you tune in to, to answer it, it correctly. I do. Yeah. I have to yeah. imagine would you rather fight a horse-sized duck mm. or a hundred duck-sized horses? And explain why you would choose the one you choose. I got to go for the hundred duck-sized horses. Yes, thank you. Because we haven't had any on my <laughs> side for a while. Me too, man. But what? 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 Why is? What's the reason? Um, the reason is, I don't know how you're going to take down a duck the size of a horse. Thank All it you. needs to do is flap its wings. Is the gust's probably going to put me down? No one's, um, no one's brought up the gust before, bro. Get out of here with the gust. No one's the brought up the gust. Hard as a motherfucker. Yeah. It's got the fucking intelligence of a brick, bro. I think that binaural got... beak, bro. Is yeah, gonna that fuck. binaural beak. <laughs> I think they've got little teeth inside that beak too, which would end up being big. Um, I'm not into it. Yeah. Um, throw a bit of bread. Throw a bit of bread on the like floor. They're direct though. descendants of dinosaurs, apparently. Um, what else are we talking? Oh, you just got to kick these tiny little fucking horses, bro. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Would I feel guilty? Yes, <laughs> but I would survive to feel the guilt. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, imagine like you could just break like all of their little tiny horse legs so easily. Yeah, yeah, render so dude, many of them horse immobile. Horse legs break all the time at the size yeah. they already are. Yeah, there's yeah, a hundred of them though. Yeah, I'll yeah, smack I'll the shit out of them, bro. Them. They can't even finish a race most times with the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, right. that's right. There's a hundred of them. Yeah, and I'm just flicking them away. Like, if I had a hundred flies coming at me, I'm just fucking I'll throw, knocking I'll them I'll throw all a piece out. of bread on the floor and double foot a drop kick that motherfucking duck to the death, bro. I don't know. Oh, just, nah, I don't reckon it's happening. I reckon that duck's <laughs> fucking your shit up. Yeah, that duck. I'm so glad the that gust, someone else. The gust, dude. The gust is you're you're gust. immediately you're immediately at a disadvantage. That Ducky thing. used gust. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ducky, yeah. exactly. Whirlwind. And, ma- and we've said that, we have said this before. And what if it's a fucking side duck as well, bro? And it's just yeah, using confusion well, on you and shit. Yeah. But what if there are a hundred little pony tars or rapid ashes or whatever? Oh yeah, no, I'm not fucking with a hundred fire throwing horses. Yeah, no, 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 no way in the world. Yeah. If that's a rapid dash like yeah. swarm. Different story. Give me that side duck, bro. Yeah. So, what if Rapidash only chooses head butt though? Yeah. Just, but doesn't, have, doesn't it have a spike on its head? No, nah, not a rat. Oh, no, nah, it's not a, it's not a not unicorn a dash. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm going to look nah, it up. It's just got flames pick. out its fucking everything, bro. Yeah, look it doesn't up. have a horn? No, nah, no, no I don't think so. horn, bro. I don't think so, dude. Oh, okay. I used to be. I used to be. Oh, oh. one of them does. Nah, that's not because that's fucking My Little Pony, dude. Nah, that's Show him Rapidash. both of those. Yeah, that's that's the Rapidash from, no. from the other the other world. Uh, dude, nah, that's nah. not a Rapidash. Nah, dude. that's a fucking rapid trash. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that's, no they can't see it. Look, hate no, me. it's not. You can see the 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 pink ones from is from the different. Okay, yeah, but we're talking. I'm talking well, first right, one fifty, bro. One, then. All right. I'm talking okay. first one fifty, and that first one fifty rapid ash never had no pink mane. It never just, had no. It just spat fire at you. That's all. Do what's yeah. worse, you know. Uh, I, I I will agree. I'm not taking a hundred fire horses on because no. that's look. I mean, it's only little fireballs, though, dude. You're not. You know. Yeah, you're but not you, you can get up. burnt by a little f- flame on the on the gas heater. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not worried about can. it. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I'm worried about Gust. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about Gust. I'm worried about Pidgey using Whirlwind, bro. Yeah. <laughs> And there's Pato in the background as we wrap it up. Uh, well, uh, look, thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thanks for uh, having me. My man, it's been, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. We finally got to do it. We were on uh, Welcome to the Potty uh, quite some time You were time on ago. borrowed time. Let's yeah, put it that way. that's on right. borrowed time. Yeah, we were always going to lose yeah, the... She was, she was about to go sideways. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> And look, I, I don't know your MMA. Down. I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> Joe Rogan, you motherfuckers. Wow! Oh, no. like these motherfuckers come on here and spit this. At least you've now got a taste that we can talk about shit other than conspiracy. Yeah, right? we yeah. went pretty yeah, hard yeah, yeah. on your on your podcast because that's what it's you know it's just like the unwritten rule. Yeah, You're gonna go on other people. 
We're going to spit some shit. And yeah. w- hopefully we sounded less crazy than the flat earth dude, right? Are, are we- yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just, the, yours was more enjoyable because we didn't get, we didn't get stuck on anything. And um, the, the, the flat earth dude, man, I just had nothing. I had nothing to rebut his, his yeah, arguments. Yeah. So it was just like. He just spilled all this shit and I was like, oh, right, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, You're like, yeah. man, I got social anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I should have I should have probably, um, yeah, just probably did, skipped did that. Did a bit of research or done some. Nah, oh, fuck I, didn't have the t- I didn't even have the time to yeah. do enough research, I don't think. Yeah, I just think he's he's done it. He's done that. So many times to so many people. He knows what he's there yeah. for. Yeah, he's exactly just trying right. to spread his message. Yeah. yeah. He, he, Recruit he more has a fucking, fucking R words and. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he, got a, he had a, like he it has was a, a list, bro. It was like a producer a fucking... or a, or someone. That was the person who emailed us. It wasn't even him directly. He actually yeah, had yeah, someone yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. He's someone emailed me as well. Want yeah. to talk about a cult. That's a fucking yeah, cult. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, you know what to do. Obviously, check out Welcome to the Potty podcast. Uh, obviously, share this around. Uh, this is video episode number three. Yeah. We've got a live stream uh, that's going to be coming up the week after this comes out. So yeah. this will be out on the Friday. And then the following Wednesday, we're going to have a big live stream. We're going to drop all of our new merch which we've got about seven or eight new designs um yep. hoodies tank tops fucking so much shit we got lots of here. shit yeah um we're gonna have uh we'll drop uh bung bung uh on the on the website we'll, we'll post the the web page and everything as well man yep. so yeah um, um uh let's do code holes for 10 percent off Fuck holes. yeah you heard it yeah you heard there it you go uh so what would that it Oh, on the yeah. So if you just go on bungbung.com, is this bungbungcoffee.com, bungbungcoffee.com, bung bung yeah, and then holes for ten percent off. There you go. Yeah, get, get on, on it, my friends. Get we uh, we obviously plugged the shit out of that coffee before there was any fucking reason for us to. So if you mm. if you wanted to, why not? Is this just some sort of like affiliate? For, no, it's not. This is just good fucking coffee. Yeah, so yeah it's, it's not even my it's not even coffee. my full time gig. Come come watch me do comedy. That's my yeah. that's my yeah. jam. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thanks. make sure you go see it. go see his. Uh, performances as well. Yeah. When, when you, when you playing, comedy when, when on you, um, Instagram, you'll see all my dates and stuff. When are you live next? Like uh, next Wednesday, Giggles Comedy seven thirty doors open. I think. Fuck yeah. Uh, that's Rhino Room Basement on uh, Peary Street. And last thing before you go, mm. how is your? I know that you work hard on the reviews, and we didn't get into talk about your love for reviews, but I know that you're working towards trying to get the the Rotten Tomatoes uh, review. Yeah, I thing. think yeah, I need I need some more five star reviews. I think I'm on like eighty something. I need two hundred yeah. five star reviews. Fuck, so you're almost halfway there. Yeah, getting there. Getting on there. the way. Right, uh, it's so- easy. Just welcome to the potty on iTunes. Scroll to the bottom. There's a, there's five stars. Literal five stars. Click the fifth one, and call it a day. Yeah, and call it a day. Yeah. Get him well, on the rotten tomato. After listening to this fucking absolute banger of an episode, there's no reason you're not going to go over there and fucking review that yeah. five stars. Takes so. less than a minute to do that, so do that. Easy. You're a legend, man. Thank you Good so much love. for coming on. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me. See you next time.